My name is Kenneth Thompson. I'm head of the wind turbine design division at DTU Wind and Energy Systems. Today we'll talk about load measurements on wind turbines. After the lecture you'll be able to understand why we do the load measurements and when we do the load measurements. I'll describe how measurements are done and you will be able to understand which analysis we apply to the measurements. In order to understand why we do measurements and when we do measurements, let's have a look at the design process of a turbine. This typically starts with a scoping phase where the target market and the wind class and also cost targets are decided upon. After that, a detailed design phase starts where initially the diameter, rated power, conceptual design of the turbine is determined and after that the detailed design of all components of the turbine is initiated and that happens in an iterative process. Eventually the first turbine is designed and it will be produced and assembled. This turbine is the prototype test turbine. It goes into the validation phase where the performance of the turbine is validated. This forms the basis for certification and later the turbine is ready for production. A prototype test turbine is installed at a test center. And this is a picture from Østerøl test site where we test the biggest offshore turbines and the reason for testing is to ensure that the turbine is safe, the turbine function as intended and that the performance of the turbine is as expected. That is in terms of power production, it's in terms of noise, electrical performance, but also loads and response. This forms the basis for design validation, which also includes a validation of the simulation model. And eventually some optimization can happen. All of that is basis for certification. And the international standard IEC 61400-13 is a very, very important standard for the load measurements. The way loads are measured on a turbine are various. There are many different sensors. A typical sensor for measuring loads is a strain gauge. We see one here in a close-up uh, picture. And here we see it installed inside a tower of a turbine. By measuring the strain in the surface of the component, we can measure how the loading is. And through a calibration, we can calibrate the measured strain into a sectional load on the turbine. Another device for measuring response on a turbine is an accelerometer. And I have an example here. This device can be mounted on many different types of components and it measures the acceleration that this component is subject to. When we talk about measurements, we measure at many, many different locations in the turbine. And typical measurements are done on the blades at different positions in the blades and different directions in the blade. It's measured in the nacelle of the turbine on the main shaft and it's measured at various places along the tower. So we measure the sectional loads and accelerations in all of these places. In addition to the measured loads and response of the turbine itself, we also need to measure what is the inflow. This is typically measured on a meteorological mast in front of the turbine where wind speeds are measured at several heights, wind direction, pressure, air temperature are measured. It can also be measured with a remote sensing device like a LiDAR. We also finally need to measure how the turbine operates. So what are the pitch angles? What are the yaw position of the turbine? What is the rotational speed of the rotor? The outcome of the measurements is time series. Typically, it's 10 minute time series with a sampling frequency of 20 to 50 Hertz. And by using that sample frequency, we can resolve the dynamics of a modern large turbine. Here we see a few examples of measured time series. We see the wind speed, we see the power production of the turbine, we see the pitch angle and the generator speed. We also see two sectional loads, one measured on the blade in the blade route and one measured in the bottom of the tower. So this is typically outcome of a measurement campaign. 10 minute time series for various conditions. In order for us to validate a design model, we need to ensure that we have enough measurements. And the tool for that is a capture matrix. 
This is a simple bookkeeping system where we record how many measurements do we have at certain conditions, at which wind speed and at which turbulence intensity. The mi uh, minimum requirements for that are described in the IEC 61400-13 standard. And what we need to ensure now is that the application area is covered as much as possible from the validation area, meaning we need to ensure that we have measured as much possible as much as possible of the wind speeds in which the turbine will operate during its life cycle. For the many measured time series, we now apply various analysis techniques. Starting out with a basic statistical analysis where we calculate the mean value, the standard deviations, the maximum and the minimum values of a load sensor. Here it's illustrated for many measured time series as function of wind speed. We also apply a more detailed analysis to selection of time series. Here we see two time series on the left hand side and two blade loads. And here on the right hand side we see what we call a frequency analysis of that, a power spectral density function. This is now a representation of the characteristics of the load measured time series, but now in the frequency domain. And here we can see how much energy do we have in that signal at various frequencies. Another typical example of analysis is fatigue analysis. And for that, we now apply what we call rain flow counting. This is a simple counting method where we calculate and count how many cycles do we see in the time signal of a certain range. So how many time series do, how many cycles do we see of a certain range? If we know the material property, we can convert that complicated information into a single digit, one single number. And that one we call the damage equivalent load. Here it's done for a number of time series plotted as function of wind speed. And for that one, we can now apply the same statistical analysis as we do to the time series. When we are validating our design model, we use the measured signals and then we do some analysis of that. Here it's illustrated as what we call a wind speed binning. So now we, for various intervals of the wind speed, do statistical analysis, including what is the uncertainty in the measurements. And then at the same conditions, the same wind speeds, the same turbulence, we do now simulations with our design model. And we can then do a comparison. And then we can have certain assessment criteria whether the design model is valid and by that whether the design is valid. That is part of the purpose of load measurements. So in summary, I have explained why we do the load measurements and when we do it. I have described how these measurements are done, sensor types, minimum requirements of the quantity of measurements, and also which analysis we apply to the measurements. Thank you for listening.